G'day guys, Dallas here from Dunham Watson. Today I'm going to be discussing with you how to choose the correct gas struts for your job. Now before we get too far into it, it's really important that we stress that faulty gas struts have led to deaths in the industry. So if you're new to gas struts, or perhaps you're unsure of what you are doing, we strongly recommend you see a professional. Within the comments of this video, you'll note that we have given you a link to the WorkSafe site. In there, you will also get pointers on how to safely work with gas struts. So at Dun & Watson, we see people needing gas struts for three reasons. The first would be replacing old gas struts because they've just run their life and they're now too tight. Secondly is because people have introduced new weight to an existing door, perhaps a solar panel, and now all of a sudden the original gas struts are simply not strong enough to lift what it needs to. Thirdly is adding gas struts to something that previously didn't have gas struts. This could be making your bed lift up in your caravan, or perhaps you're building your own camper trailer and you need the lift up top. When replacing old gas struts with new ones, this is easy. We just need to know a couple of things. Firstly, we need to know the size of the gas strut from center of eye to center of eye when extended. We need to know the diameter of the shaft, the diameter of the cylinder, and ideally, the newtons of force noted on the struts. If you don't know the newtons, we just need to know the weight it's lifting. Getting the weight can be easy. You can either just roughly estimate what it's lifting, otherwise you can get a broomstick and bathroom scales. The second reason at Dunham Watson we see people requiring new gas struts is because they've added weight to what was initially being lifted. This is usually in the form of solar panels. Once again, this is nice and easy. So if you've added more weight, all we need to know was what was initially there and how much weight you've added. So once again, we just simply ask the size of the strut from center of eye to center of eye, the diameter of the shaft, the diameter of the cylinder, the newtons of force that was there initially, and how much weight you've added. Once again, if you don't know the original newtons of force, that's fine, we just need to know what the new weight is with the addition that you've added. The third and final reason that we see people coming to Dun & Watson for gas struts is because they're introducing gas struts to something that originally didn't have struts. As we've noted earlier, this is commonly for people building their own canopies, camper trailers, or toolboxes. When deciding what gas struts you need, there is a formula, and I'm not gonna lie, the first time you look at it, it's very daunting. However, in today's video, I'm just gonna break down these points individually, and then as you'll see, it's actually quite simple. We just need to know a few pieces of information first, and then you can go away on the website and work out what struts you require, or if you give us a call with this information, we can help you identify what gas struts are ideal for your application. So here we have the formula here, and the first thing we need to know is the dead weight of the door. It's important to know that for every kilo, we work that off to being 10 newtons. Today's demonstration, we're going to be using my canopy door, and we're going to be saying this door weighs five kilos. So for the purpose of our formula, we're going to be saying that G equals 50. The second thing we need to calculate is H, half the length of the door. Today, we're going to be saying for easy mass that this door has a thousand mil drop. That means half of that would be 500. Therefore, H would be equaling 500. The third and final thing we need to identify is L, mounting distance from the hinge. When we're identifying the mounting distance from the hinge, we work off the strut being mounted 20% from the hinge point. So if our door is 1,000 mil, we're saying that L would be equaling 200. So now we have our three weights and dimensions, and we just need to identify what gas struts we're going to be using this for. When deciding what gas struts are ideal, we suggest that a strut 60% of the drop of the door is best. So as I said, if this door was 1,000 mil, 60% would equal 600. Within the Dun & Watson range of gas struts, we have a 595 mil, this would be close enough to be an ideal strut for this application. So we've now calculated all the weights and dimensions needed, and we've decided that the 595 mil gas strut would be ideal for what we're doing. So now what we have to do is run the numbers. As mentioned, G times H divided by L. So dead weight, which was five kilos, which converted into newtons of force equaled 50. 500, because we want to go half the distance of the door, and we said this door was 1,000. So half of that would be 500. And as we also said, L, mounting distance is 20% from the hinge. As we said, this door was 1,000 mil, so 20% would equal 200. We always add 15% because if you get your gas struts spot on, you may find that if you were slightly out in any of these calculations, your door may dip a little bit. Whereas to have a little bit more force is fine because 15% is hardly going to become overwhelming. You certainly don't want too much force, however, because that can then put stress on your hinge. So we add 15% to that equation, and then we divide it by the number of struts that are be going to lift the door. So when we run all these numbers through the formula, we end up with 72 newtons, 
and we know that we're going to be using a 595mm gas strut. Within the Dun & Watson range, we have 100 Newton struts. Therefore, a pair of 595 100 Newton struts would be ideal for this application. So thanks for watching. I hope I've clarified any questions you may have had about what size or Newtons of force you require when shopping for gas struts. At Dun & Watson, we have a huge range from 195mm straight through to 816mm in Newtons of force from 100 through to 1200. If you have any questions about how to run this formula, please don't hesitate to give us a call or flick us an email.